The main thing to know about growing your own tomatoes is that they're delicious and nothing you ever buy in the store will taste as good. They're also very easy to grow. Full sun position, regular water and a little bit of fertiliser. Oh, and a stake to um, tie them up as they grow. They grow well in the veggie patch. They grow well in containers, raised beds. And I'm going to show you how to grow tomatoes in straw bale. I got inspired by my friend Shirley's straw bale veggie patch, which is rocking. I'll take you on a tour. So tell me about how you started with the straw bale. She'd done some research on the bale and she bought me the bale. Yeah, we don't have to bend over. I'm too old. He put it together. He wired it together. See the wire? And and he dug it for us. It was like a rock. And then we did all the things I told you last night. Wayne just, where we said we wanted stuff, he did it with a little trap. Because they're quite tightly packed, aren't they? they? Are. And what have you got bagged over here? Strawberries, because something's eating them. But anyway, have a look at these. Got plenty of tomatoes. Oh, we this them in size. Huge. Didn't wait. There is a lot here. You're going to have these soon. You just another week or two, maybe. This, we pruned them last week. Cut them right back. We had a big frosty morning only a few weeks ago. Yeah, I cover it. Do I you? ask the weatherman every night what's happening. And there's that thing over there. I've never grown tomatoes. Everyone has always given me tomatoes or I've bought them. But everywhere I've lived, people have grown tomatoes and have kept me supplied. Is and it? I'm very fastidious about tomatoes. So, so I've been lucky. It's very, They're very tall. What type of variety did you... Do you remember? Well, that's the one that you grow quick. Sure, so don't mm. ask me, please. <laughs> They're a good crop, I think. And you've got a cucumber here as well, two, climbing two. nicely. That's This spot is ideal at full morning sun. Yeah. And I can see you've got lots of peas coming on. Don't worry, they won't go anywhere. No, it's the barking. He's so noisy. How often do you have to water? Every day. Did you find the straw bale um, dries out? or is it, No, it pretty no I never let it dry out. We're not allowed to let it dry out. Yeah, and you started with blood and bone and then you put some potting mix in. Yeah, well, I don't know what you'd use if you didn't use what the other thing that we use. Yeah, I that's it. I love the idea, Shirley, because there's no plastic. It's it's there and probably at the end of the season you've got all this compost. Oh, season. this will go in the garden. That is the real beauty of it. At the end, it won't go chucked away. Yeah, no plastic. This is a nippy-dippy stick. What's a nippy dippy stick? Oh, I don't know. It's supposed to do something to down under the soil. So it's in with mm. the tomato at the moment. But when you do put it in, you've got to make sure that that bit's in the ground. Okay, a bit of copper wire yeah, or something? It, it, I'm just going to put it in anywhere at the moment. And maybe but, they, it's nice and easy for the plant to climb up? No, no, so. it's not for that. It's, oh. it's, it's something happens that makes them grow. And I put it here because this fella was a bit sluggish and it went crazy. So it's a nippy dippy. I love your little veggie patch. You've got a lot in here, so you've got nasturtium, tomatoes, cucumbers, two lots of beans. There's another lot of beans at the back of all that. Snow peas, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a thief. I'm just have been eating the carrots. What's this one? Carrots? Yeah. Don't pull it out. Yeah, you can eat them. Have you been eating them? Yeah, they're sweet. Oh. Very sweet. We'll, we'll give it a wash it. and we'll have a snack on it. I'll find another one. I'll go in and wash them. I'll wash them. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> carrots. Look at the dogs want the carrots. They're very sweet. They're very sweet. This is our health for the morning. <laughs> oh, tell me again what kind of dog is Harry's it? a cavoodle. And what was the other thing besides the food? Cavalier Spaniel. I got the Is this your nickname as well, Toot? I thought that was a really good carrot. You know, everything comes sweet that comes mm. out of it. I think there's something really special about um, picking something and eating it straight away. Yeah. Mm. yeah well, Prince mm. Charles has been doing it for 50 years and now they've found his right and they're all wrong. I've got apples espaliate into an arch and I got that idea from Prince Charles because I saw a photo of his somewhere where he had an apple arch. So I always call it my Prince Charles oh. apple arch. Well, yeah, this is not in the compost. I bought it at uh, Bunnings. 40 bucks. It's so light. Yeah. Is it effective? Oh yeah. yeah. Everything disappears. Every every few days. That's all you've got to do to it. So meet Harry, Maggie and Tia. And each morning and evening we go for a walk to the Oval. Stop, Tia. Stop. <laughs> Everybody stop.
You ready? You going to do it? Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay. That's gorgeous. Okay, there you go. I'm inspired by my friend Shirley to grow tomatoes in hay bales. But I'm going to have a go myself. The hay bales are a great option for when you have a paved area that you want to grow vegetables on and you don't feel like using a container you don't have to use soil. As you've seen with Shirley's you're planting straight into these and you need to also allow for water to get in. Have it on the cut side facing up. You're supposed to wet these for two weeks every day just to really get them going and also include some liquid fertilizer. You can use a lot of different types of activators. I'm going to use worm juice. Here's some I prepared earlier. Brewing away at the back of my garden is some comfrey tea. I'm going to add a little bit of comfrey tea to the mix. I'm adding nutrients in the form of liquid. Some fish emulsion. The secret to success is giving this a two week time period to start letting those fertilizers take hold, wetting the bales down every day. And then I'm going to be digging out holes with this trowel. And it is quite difficult, but not as hard as I thought. Gloves are good for these because they're quite spiky. One's done. I've got to quite a depth now and this one's done. And now for some compost to put in the bottom. Even in my chook pen, there's a red back spider, but I don't think he's gonna live long now. I'm using compost from the bottom of my compost bin. It's very broken down. Okay, there's about six basil plants in here and these are a better size. Water them. The basil are smaller seedlings and so I can make smaller holes, thankfully. Pack the compost in water. Chilies. You know, there's quite a lot of space in this. So there it is. Six chili plants, a couple of tomatoes and a punnet of basil. I probably could have fitted more in. But anyway, I'll finish up now because it's about to rain. So this year I was lucky to be able to grow all my tomatoes from seeds. There's a lot of fun in doing that. It seems like a miracle, you know, you open the packet and there's these tiny little seeds and you end up with these beautiful big plants pumping out very delicious homegrown tomatoes. Seedlings are expensive to buy, so another advantage is that it saves money to um, grow your own <laughs> from seed. <laughs> And yeah, I think they're around $6 or $7 for one tomato in a, in a pot. The dog is enjoying the mud. I'm gonna be using these bags as a bit of weed suppressants. I'm chopping holes in the center of each bag. For the first two months of spring in this region you do have a likelihood of frost in the morning and so I'm experimenting with not only suppressing weeds with these but also helping to warm up the soil with heavy mulch and putting the tomato into the hole but I'm also going to put a little glass cover over it. All right time to plant. I should have got a spoon to get these out. Super tiny. I would have waited till they got a bit bigger. At the moment the labour is bringing them in and out every day so that they get some sunshine in the daytime. It has literally turned into soil I think but it'll it'll create a nice warm barrier. This broken down bag of tea tree mulch is absolutely full of little earthworms. And now for the glass jar experiment. I'm hoping it keeps it frost free and and free of pets scratching. I so hope it works. It's such an easy solution if it does. They survived yesterday which had a frost this morning. All right well we're done and hopefully the capsicum row and now the tomato row hopefully they survive the cold mornings and their little greenhouse environments. <laughs>
We're still going down to the negatives degrees Celsius at night at times and it's still quite cool. It's also saving the plants from marauding possums and other creatures that like a nibble in the early morning. It's best to stake the plant before it starts falling over. Most of the capsicums did not survive the froth. The rest have been purchased later, but the tomatoes did survive all the frost that we had and they were planted out very small and put under those little glass bottles. And they're not doing too badly. There's doesn't, I don't think it's affected their yield. There's a lot of tomatoes coming on. So it's a method I'll try again because you don't have to store anything. You don't have to store cold frames or use space up for a glass house. Well, that was epic. It was so much fun. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the subs and likes and comments. And I hope to see you in the next video.